Welcome to another episode of the Digital Kitchen. Today I am joined by the one and only Mr. Mark Veal. He Hello. is going to run us through the Santos Ranger we've got behind us. We make some juice, look at the stand, uh, and discuss all things Santos. So let's see what they're all about. Mark, thank you for joining me today in the kitchen. Okay. I know you only work around the corner, but still, it's nice to come in here and play around with Absolutely. some juices. So Santos used to look after, or look after Santos in a past life, so, so to speak. So I thought you'd be the great best guy to bring in here and talk through the range uh, and sort of bring us up to speed with, uh, with all things Santos. So yeah, Santos, so French company? French company, yeah, so they're based in Lyon. Um, relatively small company. Um, been around for around uh, 60 years. Um, Nisbets are uh, exclusive distributors of Santos in the UK. So uh, any Santos product that comes through into the UK market has come through Nisbets one way or another. Um, they are renowned for two areas really. In the continent, they're very, very famous for their coffee grinders um, and, and market leaders in coffee grinding. In the UK, um, it's more about their juices. So juices are, are a big, big part of their area. Um, and, and we're very proud to have the, the full range with us today. Cool. Um, so, the, the, yeah, we've got a different sorts of uh, juices on display here. So some people may have heard, uh, you know, terms like cold press, centrifugal, citrus, that sort of stuff. So we're going to run through those sort of options here today. Give some examples, I guess, of what they do uh, and hopefully give you a better understanding of uh, what we're on about when we say these terms. So, yeah, from the top, which would be your sort of entry level one, I guess, the, the citrus? Yeah, so all, it all depends really what you're looking to juice. Yeah. Um, so you, you nailed it earlier. So there's fundamentally, there's three different types of juicer on the market that you can get. Um, there's a citrus juicer, which we've got an example of here. There's a centrifugal juicer, which we've got two examples of. And there's the cold press juicer. So they're, they're fundamentally the three different types that you can, you can get. Depending on what you're juicing will depend on which product you're looking to buy. So uh, a clue in the name, the citrus juicer is for citrus fruit. So if you're doing lemons, oranges, grapefruit, whatever it is, um, this would be a citrus juicer. The way it works inside, uh, the machine would come with three different spindles, depending on what you're, what you're juicing. So uh, a small, medium, large, obviously, if you're doing small limes and lemons, you want the small ones. Small one. If you're doing grapefruit, ju uh, a whole grapefruit, etc., you want to use a large one. So the majority of people use the, the medium size because the, the most common one is, uh, is, is orange. Uh, and the way that works is uh, a switch on, on, the, on the main, uh, main button. Um, the fruit will be cut in half. And you literally place the fruit onto the, spin, uh, onto the, the moving spindle in the middle. Um, the juice then goes through the filter, down through the spout and into your, into your glass or jug. If you, want to, uh, if you want to adjust it slightly, if you want to have more or less pith, you can take the, 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 the pulp. If you want more or less pulp, you can take the, the filter in, in or out. Most people have it in, so it doesn't get too, too heavy on, on, uh, on pulp. Um, but that's your sort of basic citrus juicer. So I assume it's essentially it's just a mechanical version, sorry, an electronic version of, a, of the manual system. So you've had, you know, people have had them at home where you squeeze your own orange exactly juice, you've got yeah. the, the point come up, you twist the land on it, and then you throw the, uh, obviously, the, the peel away. Absolutely. And that yeah. just makes that transition a lot easier and a lot quicker, right? So Absolutely. And, and there's different options. So depending on how much you're juicing, it will depend on which model you have. This is the, the very, very entry one. So this is the smallest unit that we've got. Um, but it goes up to the, uh, the, the Evo 70, um, which will, will then be larger to fit a jug under. So if you're doing <coughs> continuous orange juice for maybe a hotel for breakfast or a juice bar, um, then you'll go for the, the large one. There's also uh, the option of having a, a lever. So rather than hold it down with your hand, uh, there's models where you can have a lever that will hold the fruit onto the, onto the spindle. Um, all depends what, what you're, you're looking to get out of it, really. Um, so you see, for this sort of machine then, would you see this uh, front of house with the, the end user users, so or would it be done beforehand and served at the table, or could it be done for both? E either or, yeah, either or. Uh, it's, it's a very, very quiet machine, uh, and that's one thing Santos pride themselves on, so a lot of their motors are very, very quiet. Um, we'll, we'll talk later about their blenders, which have got brushless motors in them, which are, are the quietest on the market. But you could easily have this front of house. On, on the continent, this is quite widely used front of house and widely used domestically. Yep. So a lot of people at home, uh, you know, in, in, in France, Spain, Italy, will, will have these, and that's their biggest seller. Um, and they will literally juice, you know, oranges every morning for breakfast. Yep. We, don't, we haven't got that culture so much in the UK, mainly because it's normally cold and raining. And yeah. we don't, we don't <laughs> so always have tea. We, yeah, exactly <laughs> that. We don't always have fresh orange juice each day. Um, but yeah, it could be done either or. Uh, not, not a problem at all. And very simple to clean as well, obviously. It all comes off. Yeah, well. all, the, all comes off, fully dishwasher safe. Um, 
there's only there's only four parts to it um that can all go through the dishwasher and then obviously back on afterwards okay. so very very simple very very um sort of entry citrus juicer um the next option within juicing really would be centrifugal yep. so these are great for citrus fruits but you can't do things like carrots and apples and pears and all that sort of stuff no. which is where this one comes in so what are these two come in so um, in the UK, this is our biggest selling juicer um, mm -hmm. through Nisbet. So this is what we call the Santos Miracle Edition. Um, it's fairly bulletproof. Uh, it's still very, very high productivity uh, and very, very simple and easy to use. Um, the two machines that we can see here, we've got the, the, the Miracle and we've got what they call the Santos 50. Um, they fundamentally work the same way. It's the same mechanics and the same operation. The biggest difference really is some of the material of how it's made is slightly differently. Mm -hmm. So this is um, fully stainless steel, etc. This one's got some plastic. Um, and the size of the baskets and how much you yield. So for example, the 50 uh, is, a, is a great juicer that will yield around 100 litres per hour if you're going to use it continuously, whereas the Miracle would yield 140 litres per hour. Okay. So that sort of gives you a comparison to other, other products on the market. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, used by some of our biggest juice chains that we supply nationally, um, and they just use them all day long. It just, yep. you know, we never have issues with them. They, they might have spare baskets that they, they put in and out, but fundamentally it's designed just to work a bit of a workhorse that you see it on and on. So in the terms of the way they operate, obviously, so you've got that basket in there, we'll obviously take one apart and have a look absolutely. at it. Absolutely. But um, if, yeah, if we take this one apart, I guess you can use that one. But, yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess, are you limited to what can go through these in terms of, you know, we'll see, have a look at the basket if it comes out. He says, last minute. Might be a little bit of thing. There we go. That's it. See, it's easy when you know how. But yeah, so you've got a basket in there, I guess, that's going to chop up or break down the, the, the product, and then that's going to spin it around really, really fast and then force the juice out the side. Exactly. That. So as simple as that. But I guess some stuff like uh, spinach, kales, and things like that are going to struggle with this sort of system. They can do. Yeah, they can do. So, the, the, like I said, the food that can go through there, it's great for apples and carrots and pears and things like pineapple you, you would need to cut the rhinos it's very very strong um, so to prevent any damage but um, most things, things like grapes can go through whole you know you have to peel you have to pick the grapes off just a whole the whole bunch of grapes can go through there uh, no issues at all and it will filter out all the waste the way it works is as the as the food comes down um, that's the top. as the food comes down obviously the food gets dropped into the chute at the top um, it then goes down to the blade, so this is spinning around, this is rotating around. The blade then chops up the fruit. Um, the, the pusher forces the food onto the blade. Uh, that then decimates the fruit completely. What happens is all the waste and the pulp goes up out into the back of the, the machine, into the waste tub. Uh, and then what's left, the juice, will go through this filter basket, through the spout, and you'd have a jug or a cup underneath to capture the juice. So um, I guess that waste is only going to start rising up and thrown out once it's you know, got drier by taking and extracting the maximum amount of juice from it so Absolutely. you get the maximum yield. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But, uh, um, great, like I say, most, most foods will go through this, no issues at all. You can put things like spinach and herbs and, and wheatgrass through it. Um, the issue is by, by the nature of its design, the problem is it, it will automatically get blocked up. So what will happen very quickly is these filters will, will get clogged with all the, all the fibres from all the, all the, all the greens. Um, and so although you could put it through, it's not fully designed for it and you're not going to yield the best quality. The other thing with these juices is they're very, very fast, very intense. Um, and they're not the best juices for keeping the colour of food. So for example, if we put a load of Granny Smith apples through, um, yes, you would get a lovely green juice immediately come through. However, relatively quickly, you would find that the, the juice will separate. You get the solids fall to the bottom uh, and, and you'll get the, 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 uh, the, the liquids at the top uh, and it would start to discolour. It would start to oxidise, what we call oxidise. So that's where oxygen has, has come in contact with the food as it's spun round uh, and it's made the, the juice go quite dark. Quite so quickly. similar to when you eat an apple or if you take a bite of it and leave it on the side, literally exactly that. 10 minutes it goes brown. Exactly. That. And that's why people put lemon juice on things to stop yeah, it going brown. Um, you can't really do that with juices as such because of that because of those two reasons the issue with the, the fiber from the spinach and wheatgrass etc and the color santos have then released their latest juicer so this is the third type of juicer on the market and it's what we call a cold press juicer works quite differently to a centrifugal centrifugal is very fast very quick uh, all about maximum yield per hour this one is all about quality of juice so um, fundamentally it works differently the food gets dropped down 
as it goes through into what we call the food chamber. There's a blade inside, which isn't really particularly sharp, quite blunt, but all it does is sort of cut open the, the carrots or the apples. Uh, and at that point, it then goes down into a filter. There's a screw inside, which, which crushes the, the food. And the idea is just sort of wringing the food out to get every drop of juice out of that food. Imagine like a, a wet tea like towel. A pestle and mortar type Yeah, style, exactly yeah. that, crushing you're crushing it. it. So uh, much less contact with oxygen because of the, the nature of the operation. Um, and it's a bit like a tea towel, you're wringing out every drop of juice in the tea towel, so the quality of juice is much, much higher. The result from that is that the juice that comes out of the bottom, it works fundamentally the same way in terms of waste. So that rather than the waste getting pushed out the back like on those two, the waste will fall down. So there's some carrot and apple that we put through already this morning. Um, the waste will fall down uh, into the bottom and the juice will come through to the front. One thing to know is the waste on here is much, much drier yeah. than, the, than the waste you get on a centrifugal. Because again, going back, we've, we've drawn every bit of moisture out of that food. So even though this machine's obviously more, more expensive, more expensive, you're going to get a better yield, better quality. Better and you can quality. Tell. So if you've ever been to like hotels and things, you usually see on the breakfast menu cold pressed juice, yeah. cold pressed orange, whatever. And that's because it's gone through something like this sort of, uh, of system whereby it's a better quality. So you, you, know, you can charge for that sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, the, the, the benefit of that is you get a better quality juice. It doesn't separate as much. So if you're, if you're pre-bottling juices, if you're going to do a grab and go, where you want to pre-bottle a load of juice, this will be the machine to use. Uh, and it keeps its colour a lot, a lot better because yep. you haven't got that fast oxidisation that goes through. A um, few other features on this machine are uh, the, the variable speed. So on these two, you've got on off and that's it. And it will carry on working as long as it's on to turn it off. With these two, you've got two motors and you can actually adjust the speed of how quickly they turn and how quickly they rotate. The benefit of that is if you're doing, uh, if you're doing something like orange, carrot and ginger, it's quite a classic juice that people will do, um, you can flush it through. They're all relatively wet ingredients, so you don't need a lot of, a lot of juicing, particularly as such. They're going to break down relatively easy. You can have it on the full, fullest speed and you're going to yield around 40 litres per hour. So again, even on the fastest speed, much, much less yield per hour than the Miracle. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's 140 litres an hour. This is maximum 40 litres per hour. But if you wanted to do as we've tested this morning, some nice ginger shots. I'll still feel it in the back of my throat, so it's lovely. <laughs> some nice ginger shots. So really good for you, ginger, or if you're doing wheatgrass shots or turmeric, anything like that, uh, and, and you're not putting lots and lots of, of, of wet fruit through, um, you could turn the machine right down so it's on its slowest setting. And again, if you imagine, that's just going to slow the whole operation down and, and yield yeah, every nice. drop of juice from all that food. So three quite different uh, juices, three quite different machines and, on how they operate. All depends on what you're looking to do. If you're looking at Citrus, obviously, a citrus juice is going to be the best. You can put citrus fruit through these if you want. It, they will work. However, um, you'd normally peel citrus right, okay. fruit. Well, so you could yeah. put oranges through there, but you'd need to peel it. You could, I've, I know people that put them through whole. I know people who put whole lemons through whole, but they balance out with a lot of sugar because yeah. it's so tart. It's yeah. so sharp. Um, so if you didn't want to get these and you had a little bit of oranges, you could, you could just peel the orange and put those through. Um, Likewise, the cold press, if you're doing a lot of fibrous foods, so spinach, herbs, wheatgrass shots are really big, really healthy. Um, that's definitely the machine for you. Yeah, I guess it's, uh, it's quite prominent now. You go to any sort of high street or any you know, busy centre, there's always some sort of juice bar popping up left, right and centre. Uh, you know, people are more conscious now of what they're eating or even more healthy. Uh, and there's, I guess, nothing more healthy than physically seeing the products going through and having the glass afterwards, which is what that's really good for, because you can play around with, say, with the flavours, you know, ginger shots, turmeric shots, yeah, and so on and so forth. That gives you that option. So it's it's all you know. Yes, the machine's an outlay, but the return on investment on these is massive. So it's worth certainly looking at uh, considering if you're looking at adding this sort of menu or option to your menu, then. Uh, these are certainly some options to contend with. And, and, and in relation to that, we've, we've got some payback sheets we can send to people. So if you are wondering, well, if I, if I spend, you know, three grand on a juicer, how much, how quickly am I going to get a return? Yeah. Um, you, you'd be amazed at how quickly you can get a return because, yeah. you know, by the time you take into account how many juices you do per day, outlay for the fruit and, and the machines, you know, I think, I think we worked out on an average cost per juice of, of what, you know, the prices are nowadays and how much fruit would cost with the additional cost of the machine, I think that, that machine pays itself back in about 17, 18 days. You know, it's incredible how, how quickly you can see a return because yeah. it's such high margins for juices. That's it. And yeah, it's the initial, I say the initial price is like, oh my God, that's a lot of money, but it's, it's not when you think about what you're yeah. doing with it and what's going through it and things like that. You know, the ingredients today cost just over a tenner. Yeah. You know, and there's, you can get a lot of juice from what we've got here today and you can sell that, you know, at a good price, certainly when it's cold pressed as well. Yeah. You know, people will pay good money for the fresh juice in front of them, certainly when you're at venues and, 
uh, functions and of course like hotels as well. Um, cool. So I guess that's a, quite a brief overview mm -hmm. of the juice. Do you want to should we put some stuff through the cold press to see what it comes out like? Just Definitely. to get some speed and stuff. How easy it is. Yeah. Um, so we'll the, the normal ginger shot where we get um, ginger with a with a hint of carrot. <laughs> so we'll put a bit of ginger through. I know Chris is a big fan of ginger. Uh, we'll put a Not few apples choice, through. When when you're juicing, little few little tips for juicing as well. It's always good to to start and finish with quite wet ingredients. So what you don't want to do is end up with any sort of dry ingredient in the chamber. So therefore we recommend if you're doing things like apple, ginger, um, spinach, you put maybe an apple at the start and at the end, because what that's going to do is kind of flush through all, all those ingredients um, uh, uh, into the drink. One feature that I'm just demonstrating with this machine here is uh, if there's a blockage inside, um, it's actually got an automatic blockage detection. So the idea is uh, if as some people do, people accidentally drop things into the chamber that shouldn't be there. So say you're doing peaches or plums and a stone were to get dropped into the, into the food chamber. Um, rather than put all that, let me just turn it off while I'm explaining. Rather than put all that, all that pressure on the machine and all that pressure on the motor for it to, for it to go through, um, when you've got something solid in there, it will automatically detect a blockage. It will then automatically go in reverse. There's a reversing button on here. So that's the normal, normal direction. If you hold the bottom button in, the whole mechanics now are going the opposite direction. So that will go the opposite direction. You then let go and it goes back to the normal way. If it detects a blockage, it will automatically do that and try and free itself of a blockage. So now you can see it coming through. It will do that three times. If after the third time it hasn't freed itself, what will happen is the machine will um, automatically cut out and you'll need to actually take it apart and find out what's stopping it from, from, from functioning. That's a, that's a protective mechanism for the motor. What we don't want to do is obviously burn the motor out by putting too much through. It's got a plunger at the top, which you can use, but you don't need to. You can see I'm not really using it as such here. Um, it's more just to guide the food through. So we've just put a little bit of juice through there. Um, it's quite a lot of yield, mine, for, uh, for what went actually it through. Is. You know, it's surprising how much juice you get out of like a carrot. It's, it's <laughs> incredible. Yeah, it really is incredible. So that, all that is is a bit of carrot, apple, and uh, obviously our favorite drink, uh, our favorite ingredient, ginger. Um, you can smell the ginger already. Mm. Yes, for So, very good bright. colour. You find it's very, very smooth. Obviously, you've got a filter in there that all the juice is going through, as you have yep. on each of the machines. Um, one thing to know on the, on the Miracle, there's three different filter baskets you can buy. So, depending on what you're doing, if you want something with a bit more pulp, you can get a filter basket with a slightly larger hole. There's another filter basket just for pineapple. So, we've got one customer who just has lots and lots of pineapple. Because of the amount of sugar content in pineapple, um, it's a slightly different design basket to, to prevent it from clogging up. Okay. But cheers, what do you think? Yeah. I oh. certainly put here some chest. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I just uh, was losing the taste of ginger in my mouth. This morning. <laughs> now well, I think that's yeah, topped us up for the rest of the day. Invigorated. But yeah, it's very nice. But um, yeah, definitely some uh, healing properties in there. And, sure. and, and like you say, to be fair, you know, the, the cost of that is probably, I don't know, Jeff, what do you think? Well, the whole lot pound? was, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it, the, pen, the whole lot was just over a tenner. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, that. It was going to cost um, you under a pound. Should we do some juicing on the mirror? Yeah, absolutely. Just to sort of see compare the, the, the speed and, it's quite and contrast. Interesting to hear the sound of it as well, because it sounds like you know you can tell by the, just by the noise. Hopefully, you can pick it up on the camera. But the fact that it's spinning so much faster, yeah. Uh, and hopefully, by leaving that there and having some juice here, we can actually see the separation happening. Absolutely. So the way this one works, like I say, very very similar to the fifty. You got a you got a plunger at the top, and then you have got a filter basket, which lifts off on and off. Very simple design, obviously all fully dishwasher safe. Um, you've got the same principle, you've got a blade at the bottom. That blade will wear down with time, uh, but you can, you can replace the blade, that's uh, available as an accessory. Um, very, very straightforward. Um, so that drops in there. Do they wear quite quickly or do you get quite, you know, a fair bit of value? Depends obviously how much you're going to be using it. Yeah. We've got juice bars that, that use them all day, every day, uh, and they probably replace the blades once a year. Okay. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not massively, uh, massively often. Um, very simple operation to put together, so three parts. Parts. We turn it on, that's the motor working, um, jug underneath, uh, what should we put through? A bit of apple, pear and ginger? Yep. I mean. So this one, remember, different mechanism, much quicker. So I'm using the plunger a little bit, but not too much. Yeah, you so can you see can straight away the yield is so much quicker, isn't it? So much faster, but then uh, bear in mind that the the waste at the back will be wetter. You're not you're not yielding per kilo as much food as you would on the on the cold press. Yeah. It's a different quality of juice. So that came out very very vibrant green to begin with. Um, what we'll do we'll just have a look at that in a in a second um, because you will start to see it oxidise 
and just start to separate a little bit. There's a few more impurities on this juicer. Um, literally two buttons, one on, one off. So this one is very much for your customer who is doing a lot of, a lot of uh, juicing throughout the day. Um, yeah, you, can see. you can see it's a bit a of a, if I, if I get the waste pile, uh, tub from the, the cold press, I mean, you can see immediately it's, it's a different, it's a different type of pulp. So this one, very, very dry. Uh, that one you could probably squeeze juice out of. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so you can see they're designed for quick output. So absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and that can be used. We've got customers that use these. So if you're doing a lot of carrot juice and you're making carrot cake, you know, you can use that pulp as, as a base for your cake. If you're doing a red velvet cake with beetroot, you can put, be, put beetroot pulp in there. Um, or people use it on the garden for, for sort of general compost, yeah. etc. Yeah, you can um, it and make it into decorations and stuff. Absolutely. Like dishes. But you can see it almost So you can away. already see the separation. You know, you've got a bit of foam at the top, uh, but you can see it starting to separate there. Um, different, different quality of juice. If we'd done just apples on the, on the cold press, that, that green colour would, would, be, would be prominent for a lot longer. Um, but then it's still a good quality juicer. You still get a very, very smooth juice. It still goes through the filter. So if you, um, if we, I know, juice this morning, we made loads of the juice, kept it in the fridge. Obviously, it's going to separate. We know that. Yeah. Can we then shake it to bring it you back together? You can shake it and then bring it back together. Yeah, okay. absolutely. It's, it's only aesthetics. You know, it's, it's, um, it's only how it looks, but it will come back together. Well, a trick which a lot of juice bars will do is they'll have, uh, which we can talk about when we talk about their blenders, um, they'll have a blender with it. So often, juice bars will blend ice into their drink automatically. So they'll know exactly how many apples, carrots, bits of ginger per drink. Um, as soon as it's juiced, they might be juicing it straight into a blender jug. And that blender jug will have X number of ice cubes in there. And they might be blending 10 ice cubes per, per 250 ml drink, for yep. example. The reason they do that is, is threefold. So one, uh, it makes the drink nice and refreshing um, because it, obviously you're blending ice into it. Uh, two, uh, it uh, adds profit because if a third of your drink is it's ice, ice the reason you're going to be... Why are uh, chains and uh, absolutely. The big you chains know, fill your Coke full of ice? Completely. They're not <laughs> stupid. You know, they, they want, they want to maximise the, maximize the profit, so that's another thing. But the third one is actually by blending ice into it, it will then re-emulsify. Okay. So then if you blend ice into it and pour it back into a glass, it will actually be solid again. It will still separate with time, but it then brings it back together immediately. Yeah, that's nice. So, yeah, so it's obviously a different flavour, I guess. So we, are, we, can, we can taste something else but ginger. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's also very, very nice. I mean, that's, that's got a, a lot of Granite Smith through it, so very, very sweet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all, like I said, it all depends really what you're juicing. If you're doing a lot of fibrous foods, if you're doing a lot of spinach, wheatgrass, things like that, herbs, then I'd recommend the cold press. Anything else, I'd recommend the, the centrifugal. Is there much difference in price? Are they, obviously, it's difficult to put a price on exact one, because obviously, depending when you're watching the video. However, it's about, it's about around a thousand pounds. About a thousand pounds more for the cold press, yeah. roughly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's about it's a bit. It is a jump, but but again, if you think about it, say you're going to do, I don't know, fifty juices a day. Um, you know, you you find that will pay back very, very quickly. And like you say, you can actually charge more mm. for a cold press juice than you can for a, a standard centrifugal. Okay, perfect. Um, because often you're using a, a better quality. Yeah, perfect. Um, so I guess, yeah, so I guess that's a, an overview then of the, of the juices we've tried a bit now. Um, yeah. And we can see the quality, you could visually, again, we can see as we've been talking, uh, the oxidation happening between the two. Yeah, exactly. So, you know. so the carrot hasn't really changed at all. It's, it's kept that lovely orange. Yeah. Um, you can see the, the change in colour, starting yeah. to go brown. Definitely. A uh, bit of foam at the top. And that's in a matter of minutes. So yeah, absolutely. Know, so, but again, if you're making it and serving it, then no problem, as yeah. they were with ice, what have you. Absolutely. Um, in terms of cleaning, um, so the way the, the, the units would need to be cleaned, so what a lot of people do, between each juice would flush water through, and that, that would kind of give it a bit of a wash out, a bit of a, clean, uh, a cleanse in between each juices. Obviously be careful of allergies and, and uh, allergens, etc. cetera. Um, and, and again, depending what you're juicing, it might be that you need to take it apart and, and put it through the dishwasher. Um, if you're doing things like ginger shots, or if you're doing things like beetroot, something very, very colorful or very, very strong in flavor, um, we'd recommend maybe you have more than one filter. And then if you, if you want to switch between customers, you can just f switch the filter over. Whilst the old filter has been put through the dishwasher, you've got the other filter to use in the meantime, and then just keep rotating them back. Um, but yeah, as, as a minimum, we'd say just flush water through in between each... each, each uh, and that's the same as the each, for the cold press? Yeah, exactly the same principle. So all you do is just fill a jug with a couple of litres of water, okay. pour it through to the top, and then that would just wash through into, in, through the filter. So say if you're using the uh, cold press and you've got quite a high volume and you're going through all day, 
Um, obviously, the tub on that was quite small. So can you get them where they go into a dump tank? You can. You can on certain ones. So yeah, on the, on the cold press you can, and on the centrifuge you can. Um, there's actually a, 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 almost like a sleeve that falls onto the bottom. So you can cut a hole in your worktop, have a, a massive bin underneath, uh, and, and have that sort of sleeve going straight into the hole. So you don't have to worry about emptying it. If you haven't got that, you do need to just bear in mind how much yeah. and how often you need to empty this. If you think we've just done a couple of jugs this morning, that's, that's, that's and that's all, yeah, that's probably a third full already. Mm. So the day that what will happen as well, if if you do forget to to empty the basket, the the pulp will go back into the machine. It will then detect that blockage, and after three times of going backwards, it will automatically stop, and and you'll have to take it apart anyway. So it's not going to break it, no. but it will slow down your operation. Yeah, and it's you know for the time it takes to empty and just chuck into a tub or whatever. Keep on um, well. There you can see the hole there. So on this one, what you'd have. You should have, again, a, like a funnel that goes down. It'll go through the hole. If you've got a hole in your worktop that you cut out, you can then have a, a large bin underneath, and then the, you wouldn't have to worry about emptying it each oh, time. Perfect. Oh, brilliant. So I guess that's the juices. Obviously, as we have mentioned at the start of the video, they do other stuff like uh, coffee grinders and things. So I think the next thing to do is jump out onto the stand that we've got the NCC and uh, have a look at what else they offer. Perfect. Cool. Let's go. Right. So as if by magic, we have now <laughs> magically appeared next to the Santo stand <laughs> in the NCC uh, to run through what we've got here on display. As I say, we looked at the juices. Uh, and we're just going to have a quick run through again, I guess, and see what other things Santos do. So we mentioned coffee grinders, so we'll start with coffee grinders. Absolutely. So like, like I say, in, in, uh, in Europe, this is probably the, um, they're, they're probably more prominent on the market than they are in the UK. Um, very, very established name uh, within coffee grinding. Uh, they do a lot of work with all the competitions, so the national barista tournaments they work very closely with. Um, so what we've got, we've got a, a range of their coffee machines here. It's kind of fundamentally two different types of coffee grinder. I was going to say, you'd think a coffee grinder is a coffee grinder. It's a machine yeah. that grinds coffee. But you can see here, there's a, is a, an array here. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the difference is, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it kind of depends, again, what, what sort of coffee you're looking to produce. So a bit like juicing, depends on what your, what your, your output is going to be. So um, fundamentally, they fall into two different camps. So you've got espresso grinders, which are, are these three here. Um, and then you've got what we call deli grinders, which are these three here. So the difference fundamentally being is deli grinders will continually grind coffee. So the coffee beans will go in the top, um, and depending on how much you're looking to grind per hour, will depend on which machine you have. So for example, the 43N here, that will do around 15 kilos an hour. Um, if you're looking for a, a higher production rate than that, you would step up to the 63, which is a much more heavy duty machine. Out of interest, just FYI, the numbers for Santos represent how, where in their timeline they invented that product okay. so you hear things like the, the 50 feet grinder you hear things like the um uh, the 46 juicer the 63 blender that means that's the 63rd product that santos ever oh, invented. Not 1963 1959 no, no different 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 what we have got is 1954 barista which is also the the 01 product so this was the very very first product that, oh. that santos ever invented ever created so that is a that is a, a top top quality barista coffee grinding unit um, the way these three work, those three work continually grinding coffee. These three work in a way of they will grind an amount of coffee per shot, per drink. So set so, by the user. Exactly that, which is fully controllable. Because you're so, quite a coffee connoisseur, shall we say. You quite I, like your coffee and I, you're I, dialing I, in. I do, yeah, <laughs> dialing into the coffee. I, I probably, in the world of coffee, I probably know about this much. <laughs> it's a massive, massive world of, it is, of it information. Is. It's a proper anorak uh, world when it, it comes down to it. It really, and we say that in the utmost respect to so, all absolutely. those coffee lovers. But, but yeah, coffee is a, a real art, you know, and people it, people get obsessed with it. And, and, and yeah, dialing into a coffee, uh, which is basically... Um, Make it uh, uh, work in the machine and dial into the machine so it's getting the best flavour out of each bean because mm -hmm. you've got so many variables with coffee depending on how the bean's been roasted, where the bean's from, where you sourced it from, to how fine you grind it, to how long you grind the, 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 the dose for. There's a million and one variables, so that's why it's such a complex world. And then plus what drink it is as well, you know, right? Turkish coffees, right? Absolutely. Up to, uh, lattes and normal. Absolutely, yeah, so, 100%. Yeah. I see some of the. Uh, say higher end I should say but more in dialed in coffee places so you're saying the dial of coffee in per drink yeah which absolutely is, is, is yeah yeah, yeah. Really, so, so for example this one here the 01 um, this is what's used on the, on the market in, in, in the continent for, for competitions. Um, the way it works is you have a very, very simple machine. You've got an on-off button on the side uh, and you've got, a, 
you've got a, a grind variable button in the, in, on the front. So here you've got the, what they call the, so the burrs, which is what the, the coffee bean goes through. So the burrs are grinding plates, which grind the coffee down. So on here you've got vertical burrs. So the beans drop down from the top into the burrs, which are rotating round, into however thick or, or, or thin you want the grind, so however coarse or fine you want the coffee to be, um, and, the, and the coffee will come out the front. For this particular unit, a lot of people will only grind per, per cup. So if you compare that to something like this one here, so the 40, you might have seen these often in, in cafes yeah. and, and, and yeah. fast food restaurants. The way it works is you will, you, will, you will turn the machine on, you'll grind coffee through, it will go into the chamber at the top, and then whenever you need the coffee, you literally just pour an amount of ground coffee in and top it up. This one, you literally grind per coffee. So the idea is to keep the beans as fresh as possible. Think of coffee a bit like food. Mm. You wouldn't, as a chef, wouldn't prepare a meal and then leave it sat on the side for three hours and expect it to taste the same as if you've just made it. Mm -hmm. Same with coffee. So coffee should be, you know, it's got to be used by date. It should be used quite fresh. Uh, and it shouldn't sit into a, what they call the hopper for very long. So for this style, the uh, uh, consumer would actually adjust the grind per drink almost to make sure that what they're getting out is the, the very, very best flavor from each bean. Very, very top end, very specified. Uh, it's very specific uh, usage. That's not your everyday coffee market. I was gonna say, would you put, so obviously there's no timer on that, it's just on off or pulse. On so off or pulse. So would you put uh, a set amount of beans in and wait yeah. for it to finish grinding that amount of beans? So, so uh, when, you, when, you, when you start looking at barista, and again, forgive me i know a tiny tiny amount of coffee in, the, in this magical world but um yeah if you were looking at say an average uh an average double shot of, of coffee being um uh, being 18 grams of, of ground coffee you would have 18 grams of beans at the top and the idea is you're going to yield everything from that coffee you might have a tiny tiny bit of wastage there but the idea is that as that's ground uh you would weigh it so you'd weigh the coffee from there you would then have a timer of how long it should take for the for the water to go through uh, and, and and make the dosage of coffee um, and you should yield on a rough two to one uh, ratio so if you've got 18 grams of, of original coffee you're going to be finishing with 36 grams of, of drinkable coffee that's oh. that <laughs> top top end. And, and again that is literally worlds away from your instant coffee exactly in, in that water, exactly it? that <laughs> um, so so that's quite a niche market that's quite a little top top end market but if there is a, a coffee house looking for for particular you know that sort of top end mm. uh, options then, then we've got them the next one along or the next two along rather are both espresso dry grinders but they work slightly differently this one you can pre-grind and the idea is you would fill this chamber up with ground coffee so if for example i don't know you, you, you're in a cafe or, or, a, or an establishment where you know between 12 and 1 you're going to get hit with 200 coffees you might pre-grind a load of beans in the morning as soon as the customers are coming in um, you're, you're, you're tamping the coffee out to order yeah. it's not ground to order but it's only been ground that day so it's still going to be quite fresh, fresh. Yeah. The next one along here, which is the 55, is a little bit different in the sense that there's no, there's no chamber to hold ground coffee. So this is literally grinding to order. So if you've got, a, if you've got an espresso machine and you come in and order a, a, a cappuccino or a latte or a flat white, etc., cetera, um, it will already be dialed in in terms of how coarse you want the grind to be. Um, you've got two options here. You've got a single espresso or a double espresso, and then you can use the buttons to adjust how long uh, it would take to grind. So you've got the variable of how thick you want the grind, and you've got the variable of, um, of how long it grinds for, which you can set. When you get the order, the order for the coffee, there's a little button at the back here. You push that in. That will then dispense the amount of coffee that you set it for for that day. So if you want, uh, if you want it to grind for 20 seconds and you want to yield... 20 grams of coffee for example you'll have already pre-programmed that on the side here you've got a, a controller so the, the whole beans will go on the top the controller here is a step controller so again you've got lots and lots of tiny tiny difference and you'd be amazed how different the flavor from coffee can be by adjusting these ever so slightly you know and when you get into top top coffee barista levels uh, you know mr ebbs is a, a, a was a, in a previous life a very good coffee, coffee barista policy. and competed <laughs> nationally you know when you get chatting to him about coffee it's, it's amazing how, how much detail they can get into um but you that would have a video for another day maybe we'll do we need to get mr involved i think yeah, he's, I think he's, 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 he's around us somewhere you we should get him involved. doing the videos but hopefully i'll grab him later. absolutely yeah <laughs> mention it to him um but yeah he, he's he's got a world of knowledge in, in regards to coffee um but that would um that would determine basically how coarse you want the, the grind the setting on the front would determine how long you want it to grind for, and then obviously your coffee grind would come out and then you would tamper it down and, and, and make the machine. So that's fundamentally how the espresso grinders work. The deli grinders, like I say, are slightly different. 
So these, all three of them, are deli grinders. You have the coffee beans in the top, depending on which unit, um, and you've got an on-off button. You've still got an adjustable switch, so depending on how fine you want it, you would have that set. Um, however, this is more for people who, it might be a garden centre, it might be a cafe, who have got lots of, of roasted beans, which they may roast themselves or they may not, but they want to sell grind coffee in bags of kilos or half kilos. So you'd have your coffee in there. Uh, the, the, two, the two knobs at the front, the two round switches, are basically for the bags. So you'd have an empty bag for your coffee beans, you would slide that in there, let go, that would then hold the bag in place, because what's going to happen is the coffee is going to come out of here. So you can set it for... Um, you can set it to continue that. You can set it so that fills the bag up. Um, the grind you would have, depending on how thick you want it, so whether it be extra fine espresso, filter, etc. If you're doing, you mentioned Turkish coffee earlier on. If you're doing Turkish coffee, for those unaware, Turkish coffee is a little bit different to normal coffee. Normal coffee, you would, uh, you would pour water through your grind coffee. Uh, whether it be a cafetiere or whatever system you're using. Uh, then the, the waste, the waste coffee at the bottom, you would traditionally throw away, or you might put on the garden, or you might put on the compost, or whatever. Turkish coffee, you don't filter. So Turkish coffee is incredibly, incredibly fine coffee. It's very strong to drink, <laughs> um, but you don't filter it. It, 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 all, it dissolves into the water. So if you want the Turkish coffee, um, this machine will go fine enough to produce Turkish coffee because of the size of the birds. It's got larger birds in there for grinding down with. But fundamentally, these, you would set the, the, the adjustments, you would pour your coffee in the top, you would turn the machine on, and as long as it's turned on, it will continue to, to grind coffee until you turn that machine off. Very straightforward, very simple operation, um, but you get a very, very consistent end product. Interesting. So it's, it's, it really is a whole new world when it comes to uh, the coffee side of things. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's great to have these on display here, obviously in the NCC, so come down and have a look at them. But if you do want to test on them, obviously we've got Mark who can uh, talk you through them. Um, and yeah, coffee's such a you know, massive thing at the minute in the industry, you know, there's coffee shops everywhere. Yeah. Um, and everybody wants that really good quality, so everybody's getting used to co top quality coffees now. Whereas previously, you know, go back 15, 20 years, people were happy with an instant coffee. Yeah. But now, since yeah, the yeah. You know, your big players are coming into the market, they've, everybody's hunting for that better quality now. So. And, and again, a bit like cold press juicing, you know, I, I've been to coffee shops where you know, the whole point, you know, there's no cakes, there's no food, it's literally just coffee and it's, it's a real art form. And I, I, I've paid, you know, six, seven pounds a shot for coffee yeah. because it's this most amazing, you know, yeah. uh, you know yeah. unique flavour that, that you get out so of so many different blends you can get out there now as well, you know, you get yeah. all these in, infused flavours and stuff. And the, it's crazy. You know, so yeah, it's really is a, a, an avenue worth exploring if you're yeah. looking at opening like a coffee shop to, you know, if, if you're going to do the effort of opening a coffee shop, then the one thing that people are going to expect is good coffee. And if you can yeah. start with that, then everything else will be a bonus in my yeah. opinion. One, one, one thing, I'd, one comment I'd make about uh, the market with coffee. So Santos, aren't, as I say, aren't as big in UK as they are in Europe for, for coffee grinders. The, the reason fundamentally that is because a lot of people in the UK, what they will do, they will, they will set, their, set their operation up with a coffee roastery um, where they buy their coffee beans from. That coffee roastery will then arrange with them their equipment. So it might be they, they lease them the grinders or they might sell them or they might hire them out or rent them, whatever it is. Uh, and it's normally quite a reasonable price. They've got a very good connection with that. Um, but what you can find is actually then you get tied into buying coffee from that person. Yeah. So as long as you're buying coffee from them, They're you've happy. got your machinery. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the minute you stop buying from that roastery, they might want their machinery back or the, the lease might be ended, etc. So if you want your own control and if you want your own uh, machines on site that you own, it's definitely a, a, a worthy option with Santos. Okay, that's cool. So again, that's grinders in a nutshell, to speak. Um, yeah. So then we go on, I guess, onto the other side of the stand uh, and see what they've got on that side. Absolutely. So I guess we're onto the last side of the display at the NCC. Um, so we can see at this end, we've got the juices that we spoke about earlier in the, in the kitchen. Uh, so there's no point touching them because obviously they're here. But again, you know, they're permanently here on display. So if you did want to come down and see what we're on about and, you know, touch play that sort of stuff then you're obviously more than welcome uh this is obviously the largest centrifuge one we're on about that you yeah, press the, the evolution down. so i guess it works bigger than the other one so i guess the last products to talk about obviously the blenders the ice crusher and then the the kitchen blender so yeah do you, yeah should we touch on them so i guess these are the probably high-end sort of uh blenders really isn't it? yeah so. absolutely so, so the, again this is one of our, our biggest sellers uh for nisbet the what we call the brushless blender um this in terms of the market would sit in in the top end category yeah. so if you were if you were looking at brands such as uh blendtec vitamix it, it's kind of up there really um the the big big um selling point with this blender with both these blenders are uh, the noise so the the motor is incredibly quiet it's got what they call a, a brushless motor so normally on a motor it's the brushes that, that create on a universal yeah. motor it's the brushes that 
create that sort of high pitched sort of vacuum cleaner y noise. That yeah. sort of you know that, that will, uh, and it's also the most the brushes that will, will burn away. And actually, when you need to replace the motor, that's the reason. This hasn't got brushes; it's done with magnets. Therefore, you have got a much much quieter operation, um, and you have got a much much uh, longer lasting motor. So the five year warranty on this motor. I guess it, spin, um, it spins obviously in both ways as well, which is yeah, which absolutely. is really a good feature, especially with the, like, the the blade design. Yeah, completely. So the the blade on this one is titanium coated. Um, you can see it's a, a unique design in the sense that each side is sort of a, a flat side and a sharp side. The reason being it's twin rotation, so the blade will go in both directions. The idea being it, it, you then yield a much smoother juice, you get, sm you get a yield a much smoother um, puree or smoothie. Um, a few other things which, which are, are unique to this, uh, this machine. You've got a safety feature in the, in the enclosure. So here you've got a little magnet just in the, in the bottom here. So to stop anyone dropping their hand in or dropping a spoon in or you know what chefs are like, they're nightmares. What are you trying, so, to, say? What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the idea is if it's working and you lift the lid, it will automatically cut out. Um, you've got um, three menus uh, of, of um, variable programs, so you can, have up to, you can have up to 30 programs on this machine, depending on what you're doing. So if you're doing frappes and smoothies, etc, etc, you yep. can have it all set. So uh, every, every time you press number one, it's exactly the same, same program. Yep. So you get that consistency. If you want to create your own programs on this, you can do. So there's a program on the computer whereby you can say, right, well, I want it to go really fast to begin with and then slow down and I want to finish it with a real high RPM because it's a milkshake and I want to get it nicely aerated. It, yeah, yeah. You can do it on a computer, um, put it onto a memory stick and then plug the memory stick into the blender and it will automatically upload all those programs onto, onto the blender. So again, a great feature if you want to you make your blender fully unique yeah. or if you've got a chain of shops and you want every shop to have exactly the same program, it's then that's right. something you can do. We've done a lot of testing with this one because it's one of the ones we always use as sort of the high-end option for when we're doing blending demos. And it is interesting when we're doing like ice drinks or milkshakes, uh, this one tends to always be that bit colder. Uh, we're about the other ones, obviously with the brushes motors go really, really fast and obliterate the product, but yeah. with heat and speed comes friction. So friction makes the product rise in temperature whereas this one where it works both ways it's crushing and then emulsifying to a degree the actual yeah. finished result is a lot colder it's quite strange it's, you yeah. sort of have to try it to believe it but it's really interesting and when we do the demos people say oh, like, oh no 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 but then they try the product they go actually it's, it's so it. much more creamy it's so yeah. much more colder um, a bit like the cold press same principle as the cold press you, you pay more but there's a reason you get why a better more money product. exactly that um, um, a sister product of, of, of the, the brushless, which they've really, which Santos released this year, is the is kind of its, its younger sister. So it's based on the same model. Um, it's ever so slightly less in power. It's got a slightly different design. Um, so you haven't got the uh, the, the display. Um, you have got a much simpler design and look and feel to it. Um, you haven't got the sound enclosure, the safety enclosure, but then a lot of the noise comes from the motor. So yep. the sound enclosures can be a bit misleading. Um, what they've done for safety features here is if it's being used, as we've tested out many times, yep. and you lift the lid open, um, it will automatically cut out. So again, there's no way of dropping your hand in or dropping a fork in. The way it works is through magnets inside the lid here. You've got several bit of magnets. And as soon as you actually lift the lid off, the operation cuts out. There's no way of using it uh, in an unsafe manner. Mm -hmm. um, both machines can be countersunk. So if you're really tight on space and you haven't got a lot of room, you can actually take the, the, the black casing off underneath. Again, you can have a, a, a hole cut into your worktop and drop it down. So therefore you've actually gained a bit more space at the top and it takes up less room. That yep. can be done on both units. Um, and this has got a less programmable feature. However, what we found is that most people only use four or five different programs. Yep. They, don't, they don't need no. 20, 30 no. different programs. You have to be really into getting your final result and really dialing it in to want to go exactly into programming that. and make your own programs. Exactly that. Um, um, the preset ones are on there really good, to be fair. They are. Um, um, in terms of the blade, exactly the same as, as, the, uh, as the 62A. Um, so the blade, again, is twin rotational. Um, exactly the same design, titanium coated. Very, very strong, very hard wearing. And again, five year warranty on the motor. Um, and one year parts and labour. So that's, that's going to be a great juice. We've got a lot of customers looking at that juice at the yeah, moment. Yeah, that's no, good. I say I always put it in the mix for, for testing. So if you ever want to see the comparison of a, sort of an entry level to the high end uh, blenders, obviously reach out as always and get in touch. So I guess as we come down to the end, we've got, obviously got the juice that we just spoke about earlier. We've got the blender and then the ice crusher. We have, so a couple of last products for Santos. So um, the kitchen blender, the kitchen blender isn't so much an area that, that, that Santos are huge in. They're more front of house blenders as we talked about. However, that's taking nothing away from this blender. So this is actually a, this is actually a very, very incredibly good blender. Very, very strong blender, what we call 37. Um, you've got a four way blade underneath. Um, all that will unscrew and that's all fully dishwasher safe. So that can all go in the dishwasher. The, the area that this really 
really excels on is if you're blending hot purees or hot soups, etc. So um, the way it works is you've actually got a locking mechanism underneath. So you can see once you click that in place, that lid's not going to come off. The, the problem with, with puree and hot food and liquid, as you know, yeah, is the steam will push the lid up. And, and sometimes it can, it can come out the top and yeah. it can be a bit unsafe. There's no way that's going to come unsafe. Very simple operation. You've got, you've got a simple speed dial or you've got a pulse, uh, which will take it up to full RPM. Um, but great blender, um, very, very good yield of smooth, smooth purees at the end. Um, and again, that would sort of sit at the top end range. So if you're looking at good, better, best, that would certainly be one of the best blenders on the market. Okay, so one of the last uh, products we're going to look at briefly for Santos is their Ice Crusher. Um, so a great uh, front of house product um, for, for drinks or for displays, anything like that. Um, literally plug it in, switch it on. Uh, you've got a, a, a hardware and blade inside. You can actually adjust how, how fine you have the, the ice crushed. Um, the ice will then go through the mechanism down into the tub. Uh, and obviously you've got a, a container there to, to catch any, any drip wasted from the bottom. If you have that on continuously, you're looking at around 150 uh, kilo per hour. Oh, wow. um, so right. very, very top end. So, yeah. so a high production rate for, for ice crushing. And again, good, good front of house product, which a lot of, a lot of our customers are, are buying. Yeah, perfect. I guess there's yeah, quite a lot of options here, but we're seeing a, pa a pattern here really where Santos is really hitting the, the higher end, you know, really good quality sort of market. Um, and you can tell that, to be fair, when you're looking at the machines and you get hands on with them and see how well they're built. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's uh, a good insight into Santos and what they do. So I can just say thank you very much for Pleasure. lending us your wealth of knowledge on the product <laughs> uh, at the NCC. And again, you know, as always, this is in the NCC. Come down, have a look at what we've got. Any further questions, any uh, issues, anything you want to try, test, as always, reach out to us. Details will be in below um, and we can get you in front of these machines and see what they can do for you. But so, thank you very much. Pleasure. And thank, thank you very you. much for watching. See you on the next one, guys. Cheers. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, for more information on the digital kitchen at the NCC and facility hire, visit the website or give us a call. Details on this are below. And don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for regular updates on the digital kitchen. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.